We are now going uh, live on Facebook and uh, wanted to welcome everybody here today and there'll be some more come in, I'm, I'm sure, as the minutes tick by. But thank you so much for coming today for maybe a little bit of different information about the Wave Watch and how to use it and uh, maybe just some ideas for the people around you that you love and want to take care of too. So it's all about frequencies. I'm a frequency person and that's what we're talking about. So I didn't know how amazing frequencies were when I first started in uh, frequency work about uh, 15 or 16 years ago. Uh, I started with a biomeridian system and uh, then Within just a year or so after starting to use that system, I actually approached that company to see if they could help me develop the Wave Watch. And at that time, um, the price was kind of cost prohibitive for me, so I didn't do it. But finally, I got the Wave Watch developed in, um, you know, COVID right during that time, so a couple of years ago. So um, that's just, you know, tiny, tiny brief history. And as I've gone, you know, the years have gone by, I've learned more and more about frequencies and I'm still just in awe and just, I just can't believe uh, the information that we're missing about frequencies. And I'll kind of say I'm conspiratorial sometimes about that because it started thousands of years ago. We had prayer. We had humming, we had chanting, all kinds of things. And so our ancient people did know that frequencies, maybe they didn't have a name, but they knew that resonant frequencies, humming, chanting, drums, et cetera, Tibetan bowls, the list is endless. They knew that those were all helpful. So that's what I've done on the Wave Watch. I've just kind of uh, changed it around a little bit, used new technology, used some things that they measured over 100 years ago for frequencies, and put them onto a tool that we can use just a little bit easier. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click over to a PowerPoint so that you can all see it. And um, I think we're ready to go. Just a little bit more. All right. Can everyone see my screen? We're doing okay. Let me know if you can't see it, but I think we're set. So um, what I really see the most is that uh, emotions affect our health and we are not realizing the extent. So you might see on the very bottom of this that I started working with this in 2008. I actually found this picture you know, find a cure before I grow boobs. Sorry, guys and gals, but uh, I uh, work with breast health. Uh, I've done that for the last uh, 15, 16 years since both my mother and sister developed breast cancer at the same time. And so the business I started was called breastresearchawareness.com. And I'm just kind of showing you that, you know, we've known about this. I've been talking about emotions and specifically our breast health for a much longer time. But today I took some of those ideas and kind of expanded them. And we've talked about emotions before a little bit, but I just had, you know, a few different ideas that I wanted to share with you. And just to remind you how important our emotions are today in our society. It just, to me, it seems like it's getting worse and worse that um, I thought it was calming down. And then I talked to other people and they're saying, no, my relatives, I still can't come see my grandkids, you know, X, Y, Z problems, whatever. Uh, so we are arguing among ourselves as a nation. Uh, maybe it's slowed down and it's better in some families. And we want to pray that that's what's going on. But just in case, I just wanted to remind you. So what kind of slapped me in the face about this picture is that you know, it says find a cure before I grow boobs. Well, I think a lot of you know that there are already cures out there. So there's a variety of help for emotions. And this has been around for a long time, huge amount of time. So prayer is obviously going to be one of our first ones for some emotions and upsets and things like that. And now we have the Wave Watch, and it's full of emotional frequencies. It has Bach remedies, and we I have a whole PowerPoint, uh, you know, uh, Facebook hour on Bach remedies, and I also have a whole hour on chakras and how those can be effective. 
Uh, there's also all kinds of gemstones. There's color therapy that can be helpful in many different formats. And then essential oils. Some of you are great users and very well versed in essential oils. So you know that those are available. And then obviously there's prescriptions with a lot of question marks to them. And there might be some other things that we could be using. Uh, but this is kind of what we're going to cover just a little bit today. So I thought this was a great uh, tool um, to just remind us how problematic our emotions can be. And so, you know, I don't know if, whether to read it. It's pretty obvious, you know, uh, anger fires up the liver. We all kind of know that one. And the heart, you know, shock attacks our kidneys. Uh, fear affects the adrenals and kidneys. You know, uh, when I just read the one shock attacks our kidneys, um, I've had a couple of uh, friends from high school and one of them in particular, um, after he had the, um, um, I'm just going to say it, after he had the vaccination, um, his kidneys failed. And um, how much of that was due to shock and having to make a decision? He didn't really want to take the shock, the shock, but you know, ended up taking it. And then all of a sudden his kidneys are uh, non-functioning. Luckily, they got them back. So, you know, some negative and some positives. But uh, shock always attacks our kidneys. Fear affects our adrenals and kidneys. Anxiety affects digestion. You know, I don't know if we're pinpointing this sometimes, but you know, if we are having nausea problems, possibly anxiety is what's going on. Stress weakens your heart and your brain. And that's the main reason I'm talking about this today, because how stressed are we? The stress to me is not letting up. I watch some more TV. I talk to some more people and, you know, my stress level probably goes up. So I'm playing a lot of frequencies on the wave watch for emotions. Worry, again, also weakens the stomach, just like the anxiety and digestion, similar. But sadness weakens your lungs and your heart also. They didn't say that. But so just an easy chart to show you that they do know that specific health problems are connected with specific emotions. And it goes on and on. So this is one that I kind of added at the last minute, and gosh, I could have done a lot more with it, but I think just a, a jump in our, uh, a jog in our memory would be good, that we're not the only people affected by emotions at this time. Suicide is the leading cause of death from ages 10 to 24. So think how our young children are reacting. And they're saying one in 15 million, excuse me, 15 million, one in five American children and adults up to 25 struggle with men, mental problems. And they are also putting in learning disorders. And two thirds or another 10 million are undiagnosed or untreated. So this is from NBC News. So you know when they're reporting some stuff like that, we've got some problems. This isn't something that they want a lot of us to know about, but we need to think about it. So I'm not sure where you're at with the Wave Watch, but I think a lot of younger people really like it and they want to play with it. And so, uh, you know, if you've got a grandchild over, uh, you know, share your wave watch with them and set it on anxiety or set it on something that you know that they might be having a particular trouble on, with. Or if you don't know, uh, work with everything. Just let it play through a lot of ideas like the Bach emotional folder would be a good one because there's 38 different ideas and you can make it go from one to the next to the next and then shut off. So if you've got enough time with your grandchild or someone you love that's younger, we really need to be protecting them. And, you know, the idea that I mentioned prescriptions, question mark, question mark, question mark, that seems to be what is going on the most. Uh, because young children at school, I am so sorry, I used to be a teacher, I was never pressed with that um, problem or told that that was my duty to report a small child who was wiggling in their seat or having behavioral problems. And all of those are now 
diligently reported, very nitpicky, if you ask me. And so the parents are immediately called and told that that child needs some support and help. And of course, prescriptions are suggested the most. So all of a sudden, you've got a tool that could help some of those younger uh, students, if that's in your inclination, or, you know, if you're around somebody. So, you know, just, just jog in your memory here. Now let's go to the adults. You know, now this was scary, you know, uh, but we all know this. Nearly one in five adults say their mental health is worse than this time last year. Wow. Does that shock you? It certainly didn't shock me. So this is, uh, you know, the mental uh, miracle, excuse me, medical association uh, saying that they even have it broken down by age groups, you know, so the younger they are. 34% of the Gen Z adults. Now, I'm I'm a little bit vague. Anybody know the exact age range of the Gen Z? I think that's the exact rate age that we were talking about earlier up to the 25. But correct me if I'm wrong. The millennials, 19% of them. Generation X, 21%. 12% of boomers, 8% of older adults have been affected. So, you know, it doesn't matter what age group we are, we are affected by this and they know it. The American Psychological Association knows it. So they're keeping statistics and they've got it all broken down. And it's kind of scary to me because they're making us think that there's not enough that we can do. So I like this chart also. I thought that um, pain and emotion uh, was very interesting. Uh, it could have been maybe been a little bit more in, uh, in depth, but I think it gives you a great, just a, a starting point to say, oh yeah, when I'm stressed, it's going to be in my head. You know, I'm going to have more headaches. I'm going to have more problems here. I'm going to have tension, you know, might even go down into the back of my neck. So there's more than, you know, when you have stress, there's problems up here of many different kinds. It could be sinuses. It could be congestion. So the list does go on. So emotional burden, they're saying, is going to show up in the shoulder, you know. And I just love this chart because I guess I hadn't thought it through before, you know. Um, lack of forgiveness is more at the throat chakra, you know, and a little bit down in the thyroid, but mostly up here. So sometimes we can't forgive people. Sometimes we, we're afraid to speak out. And this area here is where we're feeling it, you know. So whether you would con connect that or connotate that with a sore throat or, uh, you know, again, congestion, um, not sure where dental might come in if that if that's a suggestion up through there or not, but mostly they're saying pain in this area would be uh, problems with lack of forgiveness and a uh, lack of emotional support is down here. It's more to me, it's a heart chakra. You know, uh, they've got it a little bit more in the center of the chest, but that's basically where it's at. Uh, lack of flexibility. You're going to have some pain in your elbows and that's flexibility on your emotional ideas. Uh, financial worries is going to be stomach also because, you know, that translates to worry and anxiety. Same type of thing that we, we saw on a different chart. Um, I like this one. Fear of change could be in your hips or your side uh, like this uh, diagram here. And that does make sense when we kind of step out. We're using those particular um, you know, movements. But if we are afraid to step out, if we're afraid to change, we're going to feel that pain more in our hip area and our joint areas there. Isolation can be more from hands, you know, more we'll see that in the hands. So whether that translates to arthritis because of emotions or um, carpal tunnel, I can't say that one 100%. But pain in the hands, problems there is an emotion or connected to isolation emotion. I like this one, big ego. Hope this isn't too, uh, you know, specific for you. And uh, maybe it'll make you think of somebody else or maybe even yourself, you know, because sometimes we need to be, um, we need to see something on our own and say, oh, maybe that's why I'm having that trouble, you know. So it does make us think a little bit. So tension and jealousy, you know, a little bit different emotions, but definitely in the uh, calf area there, you could be having some pain from a particular emotion. Depression is more in the feet, you know, so that was interesting to me. Um, 
Anybody relating to any of these pains all of a sudden? Uh, lack of pleasure more in the ankle bones. Very, very interesting. So they do have charts and there's even more of them that are more in depth. This was just the easiest one to show you. But if you wanted to do some research on the internet, you could dig just a little bit more. It's overwhelming how much there was on the internet about pain and emotions going hand in hand. And we're just, we're not thinking of that sometimes. So sometimes we have the wave watch and we're playing different frequencies for pain, but we're not using the emotions enough. So don't forget that on the Wave Watch, each frequency set is like a different song. So if you play a song, your body hums along, and it, if it likes it, if your body doesn't care for that song, it tunes it out and lets it go, all without upsetting your system. So that's why, again, if your you know, grandchildren or a young person comes over and you put it on Bach Remedies that has 38 choices and play through all of them, it's not going to matter you know, as it works through them, it will balance as it goes. And some of those are overlapping emotions. So that's why it works together to almost do all of them. And it's so much easier to do those on a frequency set than it is to try to take a bottle here for this emotion, a bottle here for this emotion, and that type of thing, let alone the cost of having a whole set of uh, Bach emotions and different uh supplements and that kind of thing can get kind of expensive. So I have 80, 80, oh, I've already got a misprint. I have 850 frequencies for emotion. Sorry about that. 850 frequencies for emotion. Um, well, I'm having trouble this morning. I was right. I'm correcting myself back the second time. It's 850 frequencies on the watch and 10% of them, which would be 85 frequencies are for emotion. So boy, I'm correcting and double correcting. So only one frequency per set. And it's very hard to hear when there's only one frequency. Now, if you can obviously hear a frequency, there's more than one frequency in it. If you can hear the frequency set is what I should have said. There is more than one frequency inside it. But the ones that are going to be very hard to hear are the chakras. They are literally just one frequency. Now, the emotional combos, seven, there are seven frequencies inside of them. That's what that's designating. So they will be able to hear uh, a little bit better. You'll be able to hear those. So these are some choices. But again, I would just run through the whole set. Now, I do have to apologize uh, when I put the chakras in everything in my whole list of 850 ideas got alphabetized and I didn't think about the chakras should be unalphabetized. So I have them listed in order. And some of you, I think I had a lady call yesterday that says, well, what is the order of the chakras? What should they be? So this is it right here. And if you wanted to put your chakras in orders, just make a playlist and put them in, in this set. So you would start with Earth Star. That's a newer one that they've kind of added. And it is the it's below the root chakra. And so you're going to go from below the root chakra all the way up to your, you know, soul, star soul. Uh, and that is the right order if you want to reorder them. Or some people just choose to, they know they have a heart problem. They might choose to play the heart, those kind of things. So you know that your throat is bothering you. So you could play the throat chakra. You know you're having headaches up here. You could play the third eye or the crown. You see what I'm saying? Or you can choose to play them all, but those work really well together. So another idea is all of the Bach emotional remedies in a list. And um, there's 38 of them. I couldn't get it to number right in my columns, but basically there's 38 uh, Bach remedies. And like I've already mentioned before, they do kind of cross over and kind of go back and forth. So it's not a bad idea if you've got the time with somebody to play all of them. And that's what I'm playing right now. Okay. So uh, play a lot of emotions in today's dramatic traumatic, uh, emotional society, however you'd like to describe us. What's a good word for describing our society today? I'll let you think about that. Maybe at the end we can uh, throw some ideas out. Now, these are some other emotions. 
that we have or some other ideas that affect our emotions that go hand in hand. And uh, so you'll see the ADD, the ADHD. So maybe your grandchild has been diagnosed with one of those two. And so those are ones that you could play, obviously. But I'm just going to throw this out. Don't forget my favorite. So many times children are tagged with these two ideas when they actually have parasites. So run the parasites with any young child also because um, lots and lots of problems there. And it doesn't take very long, I don't believe, to get rid of some parasites. I can't you know, document that with a double-blind study, but with some of the studies I have done, I am definitely seeing that parasites can be worked with very quickly, much more so with, than with taking an herbal or taking a prescription or something like that for several months. So these are the other ideas that we need to be thinking about and working with. And I've actually had someone with Tourette syndrome have a big turnaround. She was having so many troubles and jerks and things like that. And that was very, very interesting. So uh, a lot of uh, PTSD changes. I have somebody that swears by the OCD for her sleep. When she sleeps, she puts on the OCD. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, detox mental disorders, comments on that. Uh, the comments are endless on the emotions and sleep one, two, or three. And so you can do a lot of different things. Pick what you want to use in these particular categories and set your own time. And most of you have seen this, but just in case there's somebody here today that hasn't seen this, don't forget the Wave Watch has hundreds of sound frequencies. There's no internet. I still do have some emails about that once in a while. But again, it doesn't hook up to the internet. Don't forget that I feel, hopefully most of you are there also, that being connected to the internet is not what we should be doing. These are not natural frequencies for our body. And we don't have any cords or messy wires or patches. And I still have people saying, well, where's the, you know, uh, the earplugs so I can use this and listen to it? That's that's an idea we've thrown out. We're not listening to those frequencies. We're absorbing those frequencies. And of course, there's no monthly fee for this. And it's just cost-effective self-care for everyone, even if you're hard of hearing. So that's very important because I'm a hard of hearing person. I'm completely deaf in one ear. And why would I develop something that I couldn't use myself? Of course, I want to absorb it through the skin. If we go ahead just uh, fairly quickly, I hope I'm not too boring on this, but Dr. Bruce Lipton has been one of the biggest advocates saying that DNA does not control our biology, that DNA is controlled by signals from outside the cell, including our energetic messages from positive and negative thoughts. So we're just digging a little bit deeper into our emotions now, and it just blows me away how so many things are connected to these frequencies from our emotions that we are sending back and forth. So, I mean, they we've known for years that our beliefs are energy field and will affect our physical health. So we've even named the placebo effect. Positive thoughts can heal us. They do know that. Medically, they're skeptical because it's hard to prove, quote unquote. And then there's something called a nocebo effect. Now, I forget to use this, but negative thoughts can harm and even kill us is what they're saying. But uh, we don't want to be too negative. And I, I think, you know, if we follow through that when they say kill us, it's our emotions turning around and affecting our physical aspect and breaking something down in our body. So in that aspect, yes. So definitely the nocebo effect is something that, that is, in, is in play. But again, from Dr. Bruce Lipton, our bodies can be changed as we retrain our thinking. So this goes on and on. And I have had this, he wrote this years ago, probably 20 years ago, or maybe even a little longer. So we can retrain our thinking as we go about our life. I, I kind of jumped from the placebo effect that I had two slides earlier, but when we talk about the placebo and uh, medic, you know, usually a scientific based person uh, 
maybe our medical doctor, maybe somebody who's a researcher, you know, a few more ideas like that. They're saying, oh, this is just a placebo effect. You can't prove that anything works. You can't prove that the Weight Watch works. You cannot prove this. There's no way to prove it. And so that may be a little bit true, you know, but not necessarily, you know, it's just not being recognized scientifically again. But I have a couple of examples of this. So it lists in there, if you wanted to read that, um, conditions that are re responsive to uh, placebo problems have been, um, you know, this long list, angina, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, warts, asthma, ulcers, migraine headaches, allergies, multiple sclerosis, um, diabetes, and psychiatric disorders. So they're basically saying that something is changing that. They can't pinpoint it. Now, let me just give you an example. My own son, when he first went to college, he was a guitar player and he, he got a lot of warts on his fingers. And so he couldn't play the guitar very good without it bleeding because of these warts. And then the next time I saw him, all of his warts were gone. And I'm saying, what did you do? And he's going, mom, I just, I prayed him away. It was perfect. He prayed his warts away. And as far as I know, they've never come back. Uh, I've also had a testimony, and I wish I could have found the written testimony. I, I just couldn't dig deep enough. I'm not sure where I stuck it. But there was another lady who had MS, and her written testimony basically tells me that um, she was diagnosed with MS and then chronic fatigue. And then her, you know, her, her, uh, testimony is fast forward 20 years. I don't want to bore you with my life, but I'm bedridden and I have two full-time caretakers. And then a friend, that's what friends are supposed to do. A friend brought her the wave watch. And she said, literally within three hours, she was out of pain. And within three weeks, she could pull herself up off the couch or the bed or whatever, and was having more movement. And within six weeks, she was able to go grocery shopping for the first time. And I know I've told this example before, but she was also able to drive about 100 miles and come see me in my office in Kansas City also. And this was all because a friend shared the Wave Watch with her. So when I got to ask her what she did, uh, it's like, oh, did the MS frequencies help you? That would be my response. And it's like, no. I, I did not believe that. See, that was so good. She did not believe that the uh, MS was diagnosed correctly. And she said, I just played the emotional frequencies and I sat around and cried for two weeks. So if you don't think that doesn't get you, that, that still gets me. The emotional frequencies, she cried for two weeks. And the same thing has happened with a couple other people I know that, you know, they'll say they played the emotional frequencies and it just made them cry, you know. So please use your wave watch a lot on those emotions, even though you can't hear them very much. You know, it's hard to hear, but they are playing. Your body is absorbing them. Here's another statement. This person, Martin Brofman, uh, healed his terminal cancer through a consciousness shift. And it was all with motion, emotions, consciousness. We can make our body ill or we can make our body well. You have the ability to love wherever there was a perception of lack of love. You call for love. You send love in. Love heals. So you have in your consciousness the ability and potential to heal anything as well as any being is what he says. So great information. People are doing this. And then one other thing that I want to talk about. Um, I had this again from 15 years ago from my breast health studies, but there was a study or there was a study that was starting with 80 women who had breast cancer and they were studying them to see if meditation, meditative type prayer can help us heal ourselves. And half of them could use prayer and half of them could not. Um, trouble with that study. And I don't know that I ever found, you know, I've kind of looked and maybe I wasn't looking for the right study. You know, maybe I missed it, but I was kind of insulted to think that they didn't want us to pray or whether they, why were they having to do a study to quote unquote, medically prove that prayer can help us heal ourselves. I mean, anybody that's working with prayer, that's, you know, whatever their religion is, when you pray, 
you are asking for healing so much of the time, whether it's physical healing, emotional healing, or you've got them tied together. But, you know, we don't believe that until we have a scientific study. But now we do because more and more people are starting to realize that sometimes our scientific studies are getting us off base. They're sending us on a, you know, a rabbit hole, down a rabbit hole that we don't need to go down. It's already known and we're just being redirected a different way. So I hope you're realizing that everybody can and does know, in my opinion, that prayer can help us heal ourselves. They may not be using the word prayer. They may be using meditation. There are so many words, but really it is going inside yourself and looking for that um, that savior, whatever and however you are working with your thoughts and your emotions and your religion. Um, I thought this one was probably the most amazing that I wanted to share with you today. Researchers reveal how our words can physically change our DNA. So this was in 2011, and it is in Russia was where the study was done. And uh, if you need to take any pictures today, this is the one to take or to write down this one, powerofpositivity.com. And um, there was so much. I was just overwhelmed by all the information they had. And I... I did know about this earlier. I had a book where, you know, just a small blurb was written up about it, but there was so much more on this side. And so what they're saying is that words can change and you'll start to see a reality change. And researchers actually found that DNA will always react to language. Now, I was a little bit confused how they were able to modulate laser rays and radio waves with frequencies, but I just thought that was very interesting. And, but the part that I like is this concept finally explains the power behind affirmations. You know, didn't use the word prayer. I'm going to throw that word in there, but fine. Affirmations, hypnosis, other healing modalities, prayer, prayer, prayer. So Russian researchers use this knowledge to work on devices that can change the DNA. So isn't that interesting that we can do it all by ourselves with our own words? And I'm sorry, we're slow. They knew that thousands of years ago. This is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's just, again, we have to have our scientific information to prove that this is right. Um, and I thought this information was great. It went on because I do run into people like this. And I don't know whether I need to read every single one of these, but maybe you're listening to it, you know, uh, rather than watching it. But this is telling why when certain people come in, and I've had that, not a lot of people, but they'll say, yeah, nothing works. You know, when I step up, my clocks don't work. My watches won't work. I can't wear a watch. Um, you know, when you actually shock somebody a lot of the time, they're saying that certain people uh, do have an electromagnetic energy field that is more powerful than others. And this is created by the very power of your own thoughts and intention, which is influenced by your DNA. So someone with a strong energy field might notice that CD players, computers, and other electronic devices cease to work around them. And I've had that happen with people. Very, very interesting. And then they're saying again that this does connect back to work that um, it doesn't have to do with weak energy. It has to do with these people have a little bit more energy and maybe they're connected uh, a little bit higher with intuition and consciousness. Now, I wanted to say something and I couldn't find any quote on it, but I just heard uh, at some point in time and it stayed in my mind. Uh, somebody on a podcast said that if you... Um, if we, excuse me, if we didn't have cell phones today, if the cell phones hadn't been developed, they said that we would be able to talk to each other telepathically, that what our cell phones have done and all of this electronic equipment that we're now tied to that we can't live without, that, you know, 
we could have expanded our own mind and actually went above and beyond and found more things that would be very helpful with using our brain and our mind and our emotions and our frequencies, our energy, the list goes on and on, whatever words you'd like to use. But that stuck in my mind. Yeah, we might be using telepathic today and communicating in a whole different way if we weren't tied to these cell phones. <laughs> so just to tie this study up, and I do encourage you to go read it if you if you like reading and doing a little bit more researching. Um, this study is revolutionary because it finally proves what spiritual masters have been saying for years. Our thoughts create our reality and can even reshape the structure of our matter. So they now consider that fairly conclusive with this study. But again, how many more studies will they have to do to prove and reprove and you know unprove? And it goes on and on and on. So we don't need to go into those studies. We just need to be digging deeper and using the power of our emotions and our words to help work with our health. So this is kind of like a combination of prayer and affirmations. This is from Dr. Alex Lloyd, and he has something that he calls the healing code that he is known for, and then he's developed many more things. So um, he's saying that you can say this affirmation. So this might be a good one to take a picture of if you like the idea, and you can pray for people using this code. And Basically, he is a um, has worked in the, the mental health field um, for years and years and uh, said that one day he got on, on an airplane and God just downloaded this healing code into his mind. And um, he has written a book on it and it's called The Healing Code. And basically, one or two pages tells you the healing code, which I just showed you the affirmation to say when you're working with yourself, working with somebody else, uh, sending, you know, healing affirmations to somebody else, whatever your situation, he is saying that in this book. But the other, you know, pages of the book are testimonies and the scientific uh, information behind it. So it's a great read. And then Dr. Ben Johnson, who actually worked with him, um, also had a huge problem, and I, I'm here. Here goes my mind again. <laughs> I'm not for sure whether it was MS or whether it was Parkinson's. He had a very bad um, health problem, and he used the healing code from Doctor um, Alex. He used this code and says that it healed his problem. So he had tons of medical testing to prove that it had changed drastically from the time that he started using the healing code to uh, when he finished using it or was satisfied that changes had been made and he went back and got more testing done. So the same thing is with Dr. Bradley Nelson. He's got an emotion code. And so there are books written on this. And like I said, they're a combination to me of an affir affirmation prayer that you can say, because sometimes some people are, are at a loss to know what to say, some people can just pray for hours on end, and some people need help. So these affirmations might be very helpful for some people, again, because we're referencing that DNA can be changed with the power of our voice. Now, Chinese medicine, a little bit different, but uh, Western scientists regard cancer as a change in the DNA that's uh, induced by chemical agents. Uh, radiation exposure, or insertion of viral genes. Now, I want you to think about this. This is another one of my quotes that I've had for 20 years. I wrote it up a long time ago and used it with my breast health, my bras uh, business. And look at it, it says insertion of viral genes. And that was just really spooky to me to think that I had actually had that in some of my uh, PowerPoints years ago. But just the opposite of uh, the information that comes from Chinese traditional medicine is that breast cancer is due to a specific 
emotion, mostly worry and melancholy, lots of ideas hanging around that makes one feel dissatisfied. And you can find that idea with any health problem that you are looking at. So again, I specialize more in breast health. So those are kind of some of the quotes that I have. So um, again, Chinese are going to emotions first, it does seem like. Now, here's another example. Uh, Beverly Vogt is um, a, the publisher of Breast Cancer Wellness. And she said her breast cancer turned around in 19 days after she did guided Emory Tree. So again, a little bit different, but all within that same realm of using emotions, guiding her uh, thought patterns to a certain area of her body to work and to change things. So amazing testimony and story if you haven't seen the magazine Breast Cancer Wellness. Um, they also have all kinds of charts on the internet uh, on uh, what we look like, what our energy patterns look like when we have a certain um, emotion. And so, wow, wouldn't that slow us down? So if we're full of love and happiness, you can see that we're very balanced and we've got light, you know, just like people say, oh, you're so light or, you know, I love your concept, you're light, whatever they're saying. Um, but, you know, if you're a person that is so sad, um, the contemptful, you know, shame, envy, if those are your overwhelming, overarching emotions, then you're going to be a very dark person. Your emotions are guiding and that darkness is not good for any of your organ systems. So I thought that was a neat way that they were kind of showing us uh, that our body reacts to our emotions. Now, Dr. Eric Robbins says that the medical profession will wake up someday <laughs> And re realize that unresolved emotional issues are the main cause of 85% of all illnesses. Do we really want to know that? <laughs> 85%. So I think I'm driving it home today. Got some statistics for you to show how much we need to be working with our emotions. So uh, basically, uh, he works with EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. That's another one that Dr. Mercola likes. And it's basically an affirmation that you say as you tap and do certain things here also. So uh, lots of different ideas that are a combination. And one of them is going to be something that you will glom on to. Now, some of you are already, you're set, you've got your prayer, you know that that works and it's reaching out. But other people are a little bit unbalanced in where they want to go. So I just wanted to throw some more ideas out. Or maybe you know somebody personally that isn't a prayer person, and there are some different ways that they could be reaching out. Maybe they need, you know, an affirmation to memorize and to be able to work with that. Whatever, you know, we're all different. The same thing does not work for everybody. Now, here's another idea. If you have not heard of Louise Hay, Hayes, excuse me. She was, um, she does have her own publishing company. She's got lots of books out. And again, she says, heal your body, the mental causes for physical illness and metaphysical ways to overcome them. So basically she's providing you for affirmations or just pointing out what problem causes that. So here we go again to my breast problems, but the physical connection. So if somebody can, comes into my office that has a cyst, a lump, soreness, or swelling, we can kind of talk with them, share this information with them, and uh, let them know that sometimes we are so over-mothering, over-protecting, over-nurturing that we're not taking care of ourselves, you know, and that these problems can reconnect to our breasts. So our emotions flow down and go right into our breasts. So huge connections with breast problems and emotions specifically related to breast health and uh, over mothering, over protecting. I know I'm repeating, but it's important. So if you get her book, you can just open it to a page and it'll tell you if you're having a you know problem with your you know your right shoulder versus your left shoulder, it will be very specific and say what emotion is connected with that. If you want to dig that deep, now this was a little bit harder you know for people to do. That's why on the Wave Watch it's all there. You don't have to think through a lot. 
It's not the one pill takes care of everything like the medical community wants you to believe, but it is easier maybe than, you know, people aren't grabbing books anymore. So it is on our weight watch. And the same thing with the bot flower remedies. They were basically plant remedies and we were able to measure that frequency. And then the frequency, I was able to capture it and put that on the wave watch. So um, the last thing, uh, maybe two or three things that I want to go through before our time is up, but uh, gemstones are amazing. So again, if you're into that, and I have a whole display of stones in my office, uh, I sell jewelry. Uh, once in a while, I give jewelry away uh, and usually do for gifts and Christmas and things like that. But turquoise activates the throat chakra, helping to bring uh, wisdom and truth. So there are books again on uh, different stones and what we have learned over history. Again, thousands of years, we have acknowledged that stones have a frequency and they can affect our health. So the heart of compassion is knowing that darkness and pain is, is a universal human experience and we can integrate these and become whole. So turquoise encourages us to accept ourselves. Now, my experience with turquoise, uh, when I first started my breast research awareness business uh, 16 some years ago, I was writing uh, when I updated it and actually started a business, uh, a fine, excuse me, basically like a franchise for women to, you know, duplicate my business in different areas of the country. And I was trying to write a book to be able to educate them. And it seemed like I couldn't write. You know, I'd sit down to the computer and my mind would just be blank. I wouldn't get anything written. And for some reason, I stepped up and I got my turquoise necklace that I had and put my turquoise necklace on. And I could just write all day long. You know, it, the turquoise made me more creative. And that is another uh, idea that you will see there that turquoise does help with creativity so I would take my necklace off and I'd set at the computer couldn't think of anything to write or if I wrote anything it wouldn't make any sense and then when I put my necklace back on wow you know so I was able to create 18 chapters and finish that book that I wanted to write for my franchises so please do not stay away from stones because you think they are negative they are very, very positive. They have an exact frequency that we might need sometimes. And again, this sounds a little bit crazy, but we have been told that stones are weird, that stones are uh, bad, uh, all kinds of phrasing connected with them when they're not. When you use them for a pure um, emotion, a, a pure uh, energy, everything will go the way it's supposed to be. Yes, there could be negative connotations to different things, but if you use it with a pure heart, our stones are fabulous, and that's what we should be doing. I've got several examples of amazing turnarounds. I, I had one lady that actually came into my office who wore a sapphire right here at her thyroid, and I, I commented on it because I'm a stone person, and she said, oh, yeah, her uh, chiropractor had told her that sapphire was very good th for her thyroid, and she was having trouble with that. So again, instead of using a prescription, she, her husband just happened to be a jeweler. <laughs> I forgot that part. So she had the most amazing sapphire. So she adapted that and wore that. Her eyebrows grew back in, her hair started growing back in, her problems basically connect. Uh, I think she lost weight. And a few other ideas connected with thyroid changed when she wore this sapphire necklace. So do not count out the amazing frequencies that God created in our stones. And here's another one. Rose quartz is a classic stone of love. It helps dissolve old hurts and open the heart to trust and love and have faith. So some people have started wearing stones in their pockets or, you know, carrying them around or wearing more jewelry. And um, I just love that. And it does connect me back with uh, older cultures that use stone and, and makes us think of all the times that stones were written about in the Bible. 
the armor, you know, the breastplate, the armor that was full of all kinds of stones. The list just goes on and on where we can use stones for very, very good reasoning. So Morganite is the heart chakra stone. And this is a different idea too. It's an excellent stone to heal emotional trauma and grief. So there we go on that one. So the list just goes on and on. I could talk too much about uh, emotions and all the things that we could be doing. We don't need to be um, overwhelmed as much as we are. We just need to learn some of the traditional healing ideas that have been used for thousands of years again. So even color healing ideas. So whether you wear a particular cover, color, whatever speaks to you, I'm the always the blue and the indigo. This is my color. It's in my house. It's in a lot of most of the clothes that I wear. It's in the, you know, the pictures behind me. So increases calmness. Peace, love, honesty, truth, inner peace, the emotional depth, and devotion. Um, so I think everybody has a favorite color, you know. And if you notice, you know, uh, black, it's depression, it blocks others, and it controls others' energy. Maybe it may basically is a way to say that. So it's no wonder that so many of um, people that I can think of that wear black uh, outfits or black that are all dressed in black. That's almost another way to try to control us. And we didn't even realize that, you know, it's an overt way. So, uh, you can either wear those clothes. You can have stones with that. You can have things on the wall. Your furniture could be that color. However, you want to do that. Obviously they now have different, um, healing systems that, that have colors on them. Now, the Wave Watch does not, but there are some other ideas where you are absorbing a color, you know. And of course, the best idea is to go out in the sunlight and you're absorbing all of these colors, you know. So we need these colors. They can be very helpful for all kinds of healing. And then probably, last but not least, more and more of us are getting into essential oils. And this was a brand I had kind of forgotten about, but I think I, I wrote it up because it was just uh, so tied to emotions. And they had it basically tied to the uh, particular organ system. So uh, if you needed some trauma released, uh, their name for their particular oil was bladder support. You know, if you need calm, you know, calmness, supports anxiety. Kidney support is for releasing fear. So they've got them all labeled and tied together with the emotion. And I did like that. Now, I'm not saying that, say, doTERRA or Young Living doesn't have that. I don't know. I just had this particular chart that was really easy to read. So you can um, see on your own uh, brand, uh, you know, just do a Google search, you know, what doTERRA oil helps with releasing anger, you know, however you want to say that. So liver support is the one that's uh, put out by vibrant blue oils. Uh, lung support, again, is for grief. Um, Self-worth, small intestine, you know, and I showed you a chart on that the very first. Spleen, we need that for easing worry. Thyroid support, clear expression, and uplifting to support depression. So anyway, I know I have talked and talked today and had some ideas for you. So um, I'll go back and um, stop sharing. And we've got a few minutes to share some ideas. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Um, this is a time we can talk and share. So hey, please Lisa. let me know. Hi, this is Betsy. I just um, loved your presentation. Thank you so much. Can you go back to the emotional um, slides for the wave watch? Sometimes I get a little confused on what, you know, emotions and sleep one, emotions and sleep two, emotions and sleep three. What are the differences? And, and, you know, can you just pick the one, let's say emotions and sleep one and how, and play all three. How do you save it on a playlist so that all three of them can get played through? Okay, so um, shoot, I, I had a video of that and I didn't put it in, but basically when it says, uh, it's got throughout the booklet, there are so many frequencies uh, that 
you know, our system wouldn't hold them all in one group. So they differentiated. So the number one, number two, and number three on anything is just a way to let you know that it's a different set of frequencies completely, but those frequencies are also known to help with a particular problem. Uh, the same way with a song. You know, you might have, I always say, you know, uh, you have Elvis impersonators, you know, they're three people with the same type song, but they sing it their own way, their own rhythm, their own, you know, take on it. And so it's a different song in the end, you know, and that's what the difference is in those frequencies. So if you want to put all three of them on the playlist, all you do is start the uh, frequency so that you can see the uh, play screen. And let's see if I can. So I've got it right now. I think it's. So I don't even know if you can see this. Um, oops, there you go. So all you have to do is touch the heart. You're going to go to this screen right here, and then you just simply touch the heart. And when you have selected it, it will have a little check on it. Can you see that, Betsy? Yep, I can. And then it goes into the playlist. OK, and it will go into playlist one. So then if you want sleep two, you just use the forward arrow right here and it will come up with sleep two on the screen and you touch the heart on that one. Then you forward it one more time and it will go to sleep and emotions list number three. I'm not saying them exactly right. And you touch the heart again and that's all there is to it. So you're right. just opening the one on this play on this screen. You have to have it here and then you touch the heart. And that's right. all it will so do. Then, um, so it won't necessarily play one, two, and three together. It'll just play no, that and one. you don't want them to because right. your body will be over confused. That's why they okay. were separated to start with. That's okay. just like you wouldn't want to hear three Elvis impersonations singing the same song at the same time. You know. And then with the Bach emotions one, you just hit the Bach and you and the checklist, and that's then all of the like thirty whatever ones that are in there. Yes. Correct? So okay. again, we're going to go down to this corner screen right here, and this one has two arrows looping around. So that one will only play what's on the screen all day long until your battery runs out. If you tap it again, there are three choices. Now you can see that it has the double arrows, and so that is the one you want to set it on so that it will go from one to the next, to Got the it. next, to Perfect. the next. And then if you touch it one more time for the third idea, in this lower left corner, it has a one with a square around it, different ways to maybe say that. And then that one will just play only what's on the screen for eight minutes or whatever the time allotted is, and then shut off. So those are your three different choices. Thank you now, so much. we could get more complicated here. Yeah. If you go to the um, bars right here, you touch the menu bar, the four lines that's the menu bar you can go to um, repeat settings there's different choices here and so you could touch repeat settings and it will allow you to make some of those those same choices in a different way mm -hmm. so it will say repeat mode replay times and replay interval so you can change those around but too. is that when you're in a specific frequency or that yeah. would that set the yeah. whole watch okay. you have to go no you just Each have to go time. to that frequency yeah okay great so there's always a couple different ways to do uh something on the wave watch okay so just reading some of the comments um do i have a a website where we could purchase some of your jewelry. Um, I just actually work with different women who make their own jewelry. And so that's been really uh, very uh, fun to do. And so hopefully you can go to a fair or something sometime and see somebody that has uh, jewelry that they've made. And that's a good place uh, to start with. And um, someone else says, Jay King on Home Shopping Network travels the world and says be sells beautiful gems. So again, I love stones. They are unbelievable and uh, very, very helpful. Uh, something was said about Louise Hay. Yeah, lots of ideas on Louise Hay. And uh, someone said, is there a frequency for love under emotions? And uh, I think it circles around. Love is built into so many of them and it is in the chakras also. So it'd be in the heart chakra would probably be the main one at this point in time. So. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I I've been struggling with trying to get this thing set up. I think I've got it figured out. Um, 
the if you set up a let's say a playlist um, and you want to go through there and you want to put in all the things that you'd like to work on like you go through and put in like maybe 10 or 15 things and then you play that and you can play that over and over again each day or or i could i could set it up to play continually um how long would you do that would you do it continually all day and all night uh how does that work you're really putting me on the spot you know there isn't a right or wrong you know people have frequencies and they have different ailments they have everybody is so unique and uh usually i say that people have to kind of feel their way through it themselves it's not going to hurt you once or twice a day personally i wouldn't want to hear the same song all day long you know when i you know when you think about these are songs so your body probably doesn't want to hear the same song all day long but then i change myself and i say oh but wait a minute i do play the vagus nerve all night long you know so sometimes i play them all night long and sometimes i you know i change them and uh change them throughout the day that kind of thing so there isn't a right or wrong remember we hear acoustical sounds all day long we hear acoustic uh, sounds all night long so basically that's my safety uh, feature is that we hear sounds all the time and you'll have to kind of feel through that there isn't a right or wrong the only suggestion I found was that you needed at least eight minutes of a particular sound for your body to react to it and then one other thing you might not have heard is that when you have frequencies and you have a wave file that when your body absorbs them basically one cell is going to start vibrating underneath the wave watch and then the next cell will vibrate and the next cell and then it just zips through your body at 4.3 times the speed of sound now if you are taking something that is a prescription they know that it's a different kind of a wave and the way I saw it described was a chemical wave and the wave files the chemical files excuse me are absorbed into your body also when we take them but they go through our body at one foot a second and this is so slow that the heat of our body basically burns them up and so only two percent of those kind of files or those kind of frequencies are absorbed so that's why when we are thinking about prescriptions and i'm sorry i'm not picking on any supplements but also supplements when we are absorbing them they go slowly through our body and uh, they are dissipated by heat. So we are supposed to take them all the time. We're supposed to take our prescriptions for six weeks to six months sometimes before we see a difference. Does that make sense now? Yeah, I think the, it does. The, I, that does make sense. But the question I, I was getting to is if you have a, let's say you have 10 items on your playlist and you set it up to, so it goes to repeat, will it go play item one for the eight minutes then play item two for whatever minutes and play item three will go through the whole list yes yeah and oh. the playlist will go through the whole list as long as you have it set on the double arrows at the bottom left hand corner okay. of the screen or you can okay. pick out one of them individually and make it loop all night long <laughs> either right. way either okay, way thank works. you uh-huh so um, one more idea on those playlists, do be careful because I tried to make you your own playlists and put things together that need to work together. So to me, it is uh, not balancing if you play one thing for, I was trying to think, uh, you know, sometimes they just don't go together. So like all of the frequencies are uh, together in a folder for lymph nodes. All of the frequencies are together for uh, liver, and those make more sense to play together to me than to put, you know, 50 ideas in your playlist and you play randomly one thing for liver and then, you know, 10 uh, items later you play another liver thing and then 10 items later, later you play another liver idea. It works better if they're all together. And another example of that is I had someone who set up a playlist and it had about 70 in it. And uh, she said she had Lyme disease problems. And I said, oh, did you get all 25 of the ideas? And she said, what do you mean? I saw Lyme disease. And I said, no, there are a lot of ideas connected with Lyme disease. And that's why I made you a playlist. And so there's an icon that has about 25 ideas for Lyme disease. So again, try to use those icons first. And then if you wanna put all of them into your playlist, one after the other, great. 
but there, you know, a lot of people say, I just touched the icon. That's how I tried to make it. Okay. Any other comments on uh, emotions, anything or any, anything else, any questions that I could help with? Linda, yes, I have one more question on the emotions. I noticed that lots of times you might see liver detox under different categories. Are those, or for example, or liver and kidney detox, are those different frequencies or are they the same, but they're just under diff different categories? I just put them in different categories because people may not know to do that. You yeah. know, if you're trying to kill some, you know, virus, you got to detox. If you're trying to get... Uh, you know, candida out of your system, you got to detox. And some people would not know to do that. So that's, again, why I suggest that you play that playlist, you know. So if you make your own playlist and you've got candida, candida, yeast, mold, whatever, and you have no detox in there, you've kind of haven't carried through the whole idea. You haven't helped your body to get it out. So that's mm -hmm. my idea there is that it is in different places. Anything else I can help with today? I really appreciate when people get on and pass the information around. And if I don't know if anybody has any requests, I'm I have over 55 programs probably at this point. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure that I'm not repeating. I think I've talked about emotions several times, but this this was a little bit different today. Um, so, you know, feel free to let me know if there's any uh, requests you have for um, different topics. Linda. Yes, this is Shakia, Hi, Shakia. and um, a couple of weeks ago, you did the Zoom with another woman who had written a book. Yes, Vienna Smith, uh, Dunham, Dunham Smith, sorry. And I went on Facebook Live looking for that, and I spent a half hour trying to find that particular one, and I couldn't get it to come up. Um, can you send me a link to that? I thought I can that was see if I can find it. Yep. I thought that Did was you just want the name good. of her book? Did you want the name no, of her book? I wanted I wanted that whole Zoom because oh, I no. thought that Zoom was particularly good and I wanted to share it as kind of an introductory Zoom. So okay. that's my feedback to you to kind of put that on the top of the playlist because I think it's just a real good introduction. Perfect. All right. I'll take Thank that in you. mind. And I'm not I'm not very good with some of this computer stuff, but I will try. Obviously okay. I'm not either. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. All right. Anybody Linda, else have um, I have sorry, it's Cindy. Um I do have a question. Um I played line yesterday and then um last night I was noticing a little bit of pain. When I went to bed near the gallbladder, so I played uh, gallbladder, and I remember you saying that if you wake up in the middle of the night uh, at a certain time, gallbladder was one to play. Um, so I did the gallbladder. Um, when that was through, I did liver, and then this morning I took a you know a few hours in between, and I was noticing a pain in my back, and I thought, well, I wonder if that's kidney. Um, what would you suggest next since I, um, I went through the Lyme and then those major organs, what would you recommend next? Um, you might have to go on out. onto joints, you know, but it does sound like it was cleaning something out. Usually when right. somebody has a pain, it, it changes something. And Lyme disease is notorious for messing with our gallbladder. And that's why people have so many gallbladder surgeries now is because Lyme disease has invaded it you know, and the medical community, you know, knows that it's, you know, problematic and just, you know, does surgery and takes it out. So that mm -hmm. is a clue to you that possibly it's doing something. Uh, you might run the gallbladder one more time. You might run the kidneys. I think you did some really good things to the liver. You might just need to run them a little bit longer also. I don't know okay. that I would recommend anything else, but just maybe run those again. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and lymph and detox. Was that one in there too? Yeah, she ran lymph and detox. Okay, Lynn. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> All right, we're kind of counting down unless we have any more questions. Thanks for being on today, ladies and gentlemen. 
We'll see you next week, hopefully, or anybody else that you want to send. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.